Hi, I'm Steve from the Oasis site and uh, today we're looking at the first part of Luke chapter 19 which starts with the story of Zacchaeus. Now if you are as old as me you will remember the old Sunday school song Zacchaeus was a very little man and a very little man was he. Uh, I won't bless you with the, the rest of that that song, but we find the, the story about Zacchaeus in Luke 19. That's followed by the parable of the 10 miners. And that's not the people that go underground. The miner was a coin. And this parable is a bit similar to the, the parable of the talents, but there are some differences. When I first read these verses, I was particularly drawn to what I felt were two characteristics of an authentic disciple or follower of Jesus Christ. But as I reflected more on this particular passage, I, I realized that there was something more important that was going on. These verses display the extraordinary generosity of God to people who don't deserve it. We see it especially with Zacchaeus. Uh, he was a fat cat. He was a rich tax collector. He had acquired uh, his wealth through heavy taxes on his own people on behalf of the Romans. And he was therefore probably hated, despised, rejected, and uh, uh, I would think extremely lonely. Uh, and he had heard about Jesus and he just wanted to get a glimpse of him. However, Jesus had far more in mind for Zacchaeus. He had singled out this most likely unpleasant man for some very positive, special attention. He sought him out, he knew and called his name, and he did indeed invite himself round for, for tea. Uh, he spent focused, quality time with a despised outcast. Uh, it didn't go down very well with the locals. You can read about that in the, the verses. They had failed to grasp what Luke draws out in verse 10 as the very reason that Jesus came. He came to seek and to save the lost. Secondly, we see the generosity of God in the parable, not so much in the nobleman giving money to his servants, but more so in the scale of the reward for their faithfulness. He gave them multiple cities to look after. It's, it's a bit like a, a businessman giving a few hundred quid to his employees and then saying to those that did well, here are 10 companies to run. Here are five companies to run for me with all the profits that that will bring. The reward is way out of proportion to the effort and the accomplishment put in. And this is the heart of God towards us. And it draws out our gratitude and our motivation, or it's intended to. And we see that in Zacchaeus, and we see that in some of the servants in the parable. Now, we don't know exactly what happened in Zacchaeus' house. We would love to know that, but we do know the outcome. And that was that he gave away half of his possessions to the poor, and out of the rest, he promised to give back fourfold to any that he had defrauded. This isn't just a guilty conscience speaking. This goes way beyond duty or any requirements of the, the, the Jewish law. This is evidence of a changed heart with new del delights, priorities and securities. It wasn't that Zacchaeus had finally got his act together and had done something that was deserving of God's acceptance and favour. No, Zacchaeus is responding to the overwhelming lavishness of the grace and mercy that Jesus has just shown to him. And he is therefore showing what the Bible refers to as fruit in keeping with repentance. And as disciples of Jesus Christ, if we are, uh, oh, that fruit should be evident in our lives too. 
our attitude to money and possessions is a pretty accurate thermometer of our passion for Jesus and reveals the extent to which we really understand his generosity towards us. Then we see with the servants their response to the generosity of the nobleman in how faithful they were, most of them anyway, with the very little that they had been entrusted with. You may feel that God has entrusted you with very little too. Nevertheless, every single one of us has strengths, gifts, influence, money, possessions, time, responsibilities, etc. The question is, out of an awareness of God's goodness to us, are we eager to make the little we have count for the glory of his amazing grace to help build his wonderful church and to help others who are lost to find their way back to God? If so, we have learned something of the lessons of Luke 19. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much that you came to seek and to save us. We thank you for your incredible generosity towards us when we didn't deserve it. And today we ask for the help of your Holy Spirit to live out our, our gratitude and our love and our devotion to you. And may that be reflected, please, Lord, in the way we handle the stuff that you have given to us, our money and our possessions. Help us to be generous with them and help us to be faithful with the little that you have given. And we ask this in the name of your dear son, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Have a good day today.